My criticism of an alternative history map where the Allies win World War II. Because we all know the Allies didn't win World War II. Why is all of Western Europe exactly the same before the war? Uncreative. You expect me to believe Austria would just get away with it? How unrealistic. The skinny mustache man was literally Austrian. No one would possibly forget that. How the frick would Poland just shift to the left? And then as if the Allies would just allow Germany to exist again. Seriously, the Scandinavian country countries being the exact same, boring. You just split the name in half? How realistic. I know there are definitely some uncreative types in this world, but no one would just name it Czech and then Slovakia. That's laughable. I don't even know what the thought process is behind the Balkans. Slovenia is literally the only thing Italy would lose? Since they are an Axis member, we probably wouldn't let them exist either. Man, these mappers got a thing. Oh yeah, and whatever the heck this is, literally makes no sense. And of course, the cardinal sin every time someone makes one of these alt history maps where the allies win, they always have to have the Soviet Union fall apart. Guys, just come on. Be better. Now here's an actual good alternative history map. Already this looks way more realistic. A more perfect union, or what if the United States of America was truly, utterly, absolutely massive? We are finally staying true to our name of the United States of America. This is literally all America. And actually a little bit extra if you look at our overseas colonies here. Congrats to the Filipinos, Japanese, and people of the Antarctic region. You are now American as well. Imagine somebody from Europe just hearing the word United States of America, knowing that there's both a North and South American continent, and this is instantly what they think our massive empire actually looks like. It would be absolutely terrified. I see it got rid of some of the Canadian provinces, made things a little bit more clean and bigger. I'm not sure why some of these other choices were really made, but then again, we have a whole two continents to rule over. We can't have, like, a ton of states everywhere. I'm just glad you've chosen to keep my birth state of Alabama, even if we don't have a coastline anymore. For some reason, Arizona has been chopped up a bit and given to Sonora. I was going to be upset that Baja California isn't united with California, but I do like this alternative name, and now it makes a lot more sense. At this point, who needs two Dakotas anymore? I still see there's a huge mess here in the Northeast. Interesting. Of course, all of Central America and the Caribbean is ours, as well as Venezuela, Colombia, Brazil, Peru, all the South American countries countries have been incredibly balkanized in a in a way, but at the same time, not really. We actually did the exact opposite. This is just the states, because we're all the USA now. Uh-oh, angry British noises intensify. I mean, if the UK wants to try to take those islands from this empire, I guess, uh, you know, try. And the biggest one finally stole Greenland from Denmark. A confused alien's guide to Earth, the US region. So in order to disguise themselves, the aliens should be wearing this in our states. There's level one, or the orange states, which is casual, muted colors, strangulation noose, aggressive hand hand gestures. Pretty much only do this in these states. There's the level 2 attire, or formal wear, visors and precious metals. Don't forget to order the Starbucks for a performance narcotic. A time display and cargo shorts for maximum storage. Nike sneakers, because humans use child labor. And also combat boots, which are actually worn during peacetime, just in case. Just be careful of one of these level 2 states. Humans are cancelled. Finally, there's level 3 attire, which is religious garb. Elaborate headdresses indicating religious affiliation. Also sports jerseys devoted to a specific athlete, ripped jeans, most sacred American garment, and then there's high heels, which are highly impractical, but good as an emergency weapon. Outside of attire, fellow aliens should also know about traditional American fuel source, as well as Florida dogs, man's other best friend, and weirdly, the Georgia peach. One of the biggest religious structures in this country is in Michigan. More than 100,000 devotees chant, let's go blue in honor of their local deity, Wolverines. Another sacred location happens to be a place called Mississippi, truly a place of great importance. One of the most important things I completely forgot is actually you don't have to even wear a disguise in certain states like California and Florida. We're already used to alien-like people walking around. What if the 16 great Turkic empires united into one giant Omega Turkic empire? Now this is one thick empire. Stretching all the way from almost modern-day Morocco to the Pacific Ocean in the east and most of the Indian subcontinent this is definitely what the world's gonna look like by 2025. Apparently a Turkish man claimed that this was all Turkish back in the 1960s, and that is how we have come to this conclusion. That is definitely making sense to me. What a great flag right there. Man, if I didn't know any better, I'm probably Turkic. Thank you, I really needed this in my life. Someone used the AI picture generator, Dolly, to create some type of 19th century US election. On one side, corrupt bearded Republican versus anti-corrupt, but kind of a supremacist Democrat. Those old school elections back in the 1800s were something else. Like the 
The Democrat won by 2%. Ah, uh, the Gilded Age. Leaflets dropped on Axe's soldiers at the Battle of Lakeland, mocking their slow progress through Florida in 1944. Only gotta go another 550 kilometers to get to DC. They got to Fort Myers in 1943, and they barely made it up the coast of Florida by 1944. If they're lucky, they might be able to leave Florida by 1946. And then only a few years later, yeah, you got it. So that's actually an alternative history spinoff of a real life propaganda poster. In reality, the Axis members actually dropped this on us, moving through the Italian peninsula back in 1943. They were joking around how slow it was taking us to get through the Italians, I guess, and they said we weren't going to get to Berlin until 1952. This is a really odd thing to do, like to laugh about you almost being invaded in a way. Like you're acknowledging that you're eventually going to collapse, but yet trying to make fun of the person that is beating your ass. So this is like the reverse situation if the Nono Germans got to basically our Italian peninsula. As always, great work from Leo Matteo. What if the US lost the Cold War? Boring. What if the US and the USSR both lost the Cold War? Now that's an alternative history I have never heard of before, and I'm disappointed I can't find a map about this. I guess I'll just make my own. So since the Soviets actually did lose the Cold War in our timeline, most of the Eastern Hemisphere would probably stay the exact same. At least the former Soviet territory, they'd still have to lose all of the Balkans, all of Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan, that stuff. But because the US would also be losing the Cold War during this timeline, something similar needs to happen here. I don't really know who would be forcing us to break apart, but I can tell you what we'd lose for sure. There's absolutely no way we keep Texas. We absolutely lose the state if we also lose the Cold War. It had its own history and everything. It's its, its own country now. And I'd be very confident we'd also for sure lose Hawaii and especially Alaska. And because all these countries were just released, no other neighboring country like gobbled up some of the former Soviet satellite states. I would just say Alaska's independent. I would have given it to Canada though. You could maybe argue that the no-no Americans would also be given their freedom. I mean, this would be a lot of territory, but something like this. I don't think they'd be given everything, but maybe some of it. Maybe Spain is justified to be like Spanish territory, so they're independent. So maybe something similar to this, and the United States just becomes, I don't know, New England? They gotta revert back to like their old school name. I debated giving them like old Mexico lands, but it just got too messy. This seems kind of proportionate to the amount of land the Soviets lost, but who knows? This is actually really boring because I threw it together in two seconds, but it'd be way more fun if like all of the borders were kind of shifted a little bit. They didn't just take the old state borders. New borders were drawn, and maybe I should have added like a couple of like new places over here, give California their independence. Maybe that's better. What if Chicago became its very own state or its very own city state, actually? I don't know why I felt the need for you to add an extra one of these red stars. I don't know, just to make it like it's a state now. Or wait, looking into the Chicago flag's symbolism, six-pointed stars are used because five-pointed stars represent sovereign states. That'd be kind of a cool little detail if this was just four or five-pointed stars. Population here would be about 10 million, of course, the capital being Chicago. And they'd be making a pretty good amount of GDP compared to the other states. So because it's a city-state, it wouldn't be producing anywhere near like the top 10 states, but it would be be kind of around that 12th place spot. It's still pretty good for a pretty tiny area. I like that they're also eating a little bit out of Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin. I mean, besides Washington, D.C., this is pretty much the closest city state we already have. The Chicago metro area has almost 10 million people living in it, whereas the entire state of Illinois only has 2 million more. Literally everyone is already living up here in this corner part of the state. Yeah, what are we supposed to do with the rest of Illinois after this happens? What if the German invasion of Poland went like the Russian invasion of Ukraine? Or basically, if it took took two months for the Nono Germans to get just this amount of Polish territory. In reality, it only took about one month for Poland to fall, but I mean, they were literally being invaded by two massive forces from both sides. Does World War II even go anywhere if Poland is putting up this much of a defense? And if the Soviets don't attack out here from the east? This is actually what happened. This seems like it'd be a very long and drawn out conflict. But then maybe Nono Germany would last a lot longer than just six years. I don't know. I really like this concept. The Northeast Containment Zone or if there was a zombie invasion that happened from New England. I don't really know where this area started, but this would be terrifying. It'd be locking out most of New York City as well as a big chunk of Connecticut, all of Connecticut and all of Rhode Island. Boston just barely made it out of it. You might as well have just included Boston because yeah. I'm just trying to think of a worse place on earth you can be during a zombie apocalypse than New York City. Well, probably some densely populated places in China and India, but this one pretty bad too. With the zombies having access to all this, this would just literally be like a 
spawn point for them to continue to pump out zombies. All the red icons are showing the cities that have been overrun. They are completely unsavable. There's just no way you'd be able to keep every single zombie outside of Pennsylvania or the rest of New York. Like, there's got to be a few stragglers or they're going to learn how to swim. Plus, how do you even make a wall this big when zombies are running around? Like, there's just no way. They should make a movie about this. This sounds like Escape from LA, Escape from New York, except with zombies. Oh, the U.S. military is literally airstriking Manhattan. Also, no movement between U.S. and Canada. I would like to see this in a movie. I always love to take a look at people's predictions for the future world map. This is a world map in 2035 or in 13 years. So I don't notice any immediate changes here in the Western Hemisphere. Again, this is only 13 years. We shouldn't see too many crazy things happen, right? I am noticing an East African Federation that is formed out of Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda. For a second there, I thought Ethiopia became a massive inland lake. Libya has been split into two different states. For the most part, Western Europe looks the same except for the United Kingdom with Scotland becoming independent. But interestingly, not Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland stills with the UK. It was just Scotland that went by themselves. And here's the prediction for Ukraine. They've been completely cut off from the Black Sea. They are now a landlocked nation. There seems to be a border conflict here with Turkey because Syria is still going through a lot of chaos. Oh, and then Kurdistan has risen up. A couple other like minor civil wars that are happening, uh, especially in Central Asia. Something kind of looks a little bit different here. I see the supreme glorious leader has yet to fall and Antarctica has been mostly split between Australia, Norway, and I don't know. Isn't all this stuff unofficial anyways? I don't think we have anything hard confirmed about who controls that continent, right? I don't think this is too wild for only 13 years. You can't have like some massive changes happening or maybe you could, but... Let's just not think about that. I guess we'll have to come back to this in 13 years and see what you got right. And big thanks to my patrons. Isaac, I guess. Australia's Susius Chungus. Ashton Powers Faja. Hey, Susos, man. A uh, fat. My name is Joe Biden. I love fat being Joe Biden. Drew's Argentinian grandpa. Cowboys 83. Bring back Polo. Bornski W. Good old Raya. Drew's pet dog. Jakov Bruni. Marco Hendetta. 5610. Fresh animation. Rise. The Mexican Why am I doing this? And the Conqueror.